We all know what was officially said through the transcripts between Xi Jinping and Vladimir Putin during their meeting that took place in Moscow. But what we don't know is any potential behind the scenes or under the table deals that may have been made. The biggest concern is obviously China supplying weapons to Russia for use in Ukraine. Now, some of these concerns are derived from videos that show Chinese mortars being discovered by Ukrainian forces among Russian captured equipment. These are 60 millimeter mortars. Russia's military officially doesn't use 60 millimeter mortar systems. They never have. So what many in the intelligence community is thinking, and I agree with this, is that Russia is buying Chinese 60 millimeter mortars from Afghanistan, not directly from China. So Afghanistan had purchased many of these 60 millimeter mortars over time for their own use, but right now Afghanistan is in a, in a financial crunch, so they need money to come, inflows to come in. So they're selling military equipment to Russia, it would seem. I still firmly believe China will not sell weapons to Russia. And I've talked about how economically China relies more on the U.S. and Europe than it does on Russia by a huge measure, like huge measure. I'm talking 10 times more reliance economically on U.S., Western uh, alliance and NATO nations than they do with Russia. They don't want to interrupt that, but I mean, the Chinese don't want to impact that economic relationship. So, And some people may counter my argument by saying, well, a deal between China and Russia means that they can make everything they would need internally. Well, no, not really. They really can't, not anytime soon at least. And this is where the West has some leverage. And I can give you one very specific but very devastating option the West has. It would be to use sanctions to bring China's commercial aircraft industry to a screeching halt, which would be a major blow to Xi Jinping's efforts to show himself as a global mediator, a global power. His prestige, his prestige would be impacted because it would, he would lose his self-sufficiency in that regard. Yes, they buy Western engines for their aircraft, but they're still slapped with Chinese logos, and he gets to tout it around as this is a Chinese aircraft. The exponential growth of passenger air traffic in China has made it a major customer of Western-made jets. And China's commercial transports are heavily dependent on Western imported technologies and systems. China wants to develop its own homegrown substitutes for these imported components and create its own Chinese, purely Chinese from the ground up built jet, but that's a long road. Jet engines are a completely different level in terms of barriers to entry and only four companies in three countries on earth make commercial jet engines. In the US it's GE and Pratt and & Whitney, in the UK it's Rolls Royce and in France it's Saffron, but Saffron only does it with a joint venture with GE. So they rely on GE US tech. As a consequence, of the limited number of jet engine suppliers, the Commercial Aircraft Corporation of China relies on these Western companies. And all of these Western companies are very much more aligned to the U.S. than China. I mean, it's the United Kingdom and France versus uh, China here. They'll align with the U.S. If it, when it comes to commercial aircraft. The Chinese ARJ-21 regional jet and their C919 uh, jet are both powered by GE engines imported from the United States. For the C919, China is trying to develop a replacement called the CJ1000, but it won't enter service until the end of the decade, and it still requires limited technology, including chips and some of the gauging and some of the more precise uh, needs within the engine itself. So killing the U.S. could find a way to kill the project, and it would bring China ha have to bring China back to the drawing board for its whole jet engine program that would be significant regardless of whether western sanctions go into place because of a war with with taiwan or because of supplying um, weapons to ukraine to russia for use in ukraine the best case scenario right now for china's aerospace aspirations is their homegrown engine won't be available for another 10 years the mid 2030s and even then it's not even entirely sure whether it's going to be completely safe or it would be anything better than a second-rate engine. So this is one area that the West can absolutely flex on China, and it is one area where the West has an absolute monopoly over China when it comes to something they absolutely need for their economy to run properly.